What a bright and beautiful day it is out there. And what better yet to do than a Sunday school message. <laughs> all right, I hope you guys are doing well. And let's all go to God before we get into the scriptures today. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for uh, just giving us another bright and beautiful day out there. No matter what uh, day it is, Lord, I know that uh, every day we wake up, well, we wake up it is a gift from you and that we uh, will cherish it, Lord, Heavenly Father. So I thank you. Uh, through this message, Lord, I pray that uh, the, the meaning comes out um, and so that your children here may be able to understand and comprehend and use it to uh, in their lives, Lord Heavenly Father. So I thank you so much in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Alrighty, so today we are going to be talking about God gives hope through life. And so a little bit of backstory about uh, what's gonna, what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about a dude named Ezekiel. He's a prophet, actually, of God. And so if we know what a prophet is. It's someone who uh, hears from God and speaks out what they've heard from God. Oh, in the Bible-wise. And so uh, with Ezekiel, um, a back, back story about what happened before we get into it. Uh, of course, last week we talked about how the Babylonians came and took over because King uh, uh, Hezekiah was uh, being... Not too good, you could say that. And so, yeah, the Babylon took over, and it was decimated a lot. And so, uh, we find out here that, um, oh, no, yeah. So, uh, Babylon invaded, number, step one right here, Babylon invaded. And so, um, because the people were spiritually dead, so they didn't, they didn't give a D about God and what, he, and what God wanted, and so they just did what they wanted. And so, of course, that one, God had to discipline them somehow, and that was the form of discipline. And so, I mean, being the Israelites, uh, just looking from their perspective, you know, being, uh, having everything taken from you and being um, transported to a place where it's not your home, it feels like prison. And so, pretty much prison without the possibility of parole. And so, there is pretty much no hope left for you. And so, they, the Israelites had no hope left. But yet, God still had other plans. And it was through the mouth of Ezekiel, which is the dude we're going to be talking about today, and the vision that he received from God. And so we're going to be in chapter 37. And so, in verse 1 through 6, let's get started. Alrighty. So it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass among them, round surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, you know. Again he said to me, Prophecy, prophecy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you to make flesh grow back on you. Cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. And so uh, for this one, uh, if you know what CPR is, it's, I'm, I don't know what that abbreviation is. It's just, all I know is that it's, it's used to save someone's life after they drown or after their heart stopped. And so, but that's shortly after uh, their death. And so that you could bring them back afterward that. But what about bones? How can you give CPR to bones? Well, the thing is, God answered that through um, uh, Ezekiel. He said in verse, um, let's see, uh, 5. Thus says the Lord, Behold, you will cause breath to enter you and be life. Oh, prophecy, or 4. Number 4 said, Prophecy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And after that, they will come to life. And so, pretty much that is God's CPR right there. His, his words. And so, uh, what he told um, Ezekiel to do is go tell him about um, like the hope that will come in the future so that you guys may have may live again. Because when you have gone through a phase in your life where you had no hope at all of anything, you just you just don't feel like doing anything. It's like you're dead on the inside. And so that's what how the Israelites felt like. But yeah, God had other plans. And so he... From what he wanted, he wanted Ezekiel to go tell him about the future hope that was going to be um, coming to them. And so uh, we're here. I put the notes. God's 
he spoke things into creation. And so being that there are bones, I mean, God created uh, Adam out of uh, clay. And so he gave the breath of life, or in other words, other creations, he spoke them into existence. And so with, you know, us being like, you know, still having flesh on us, you know, our spirit is just dead. And so the only, the thing that could, um, you, you say, bring life back into us is God's words. And so, I mean, it, it may, may take a little while, but God will still, like, once we do hear God's words and it does take effect. It will give us life again. All right. So, uh, verse 16 to 17, and 20 to 23. All right. Let's see. And you, son of man, take for yourself one stick and write it. For Judah and for the sons of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write on it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and the house of Israel, his companions, then join them for yourself one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. The sticks which you write on will be your hands before their eyes. Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and I will gather them from every side and bring them towards or into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land of the mountains of Israel, and one king will be king over all of them. And they will no longer be two nations, and no longer be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and their detestable uh, things, or with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places, which they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. And they will be my people, and I will be their God. And so, by God giving them new life, it's not just about giving them hope at all. Uh, with God's words... Uh, being given by the prophet Ezekiel, he says that um, in here it talked about two sticks and that will be joined together and that symbolizes the um, the kingdom of Israel. It was divided from uh, uh, Judah and Ephraim. And so with this one, God is saying, you know, after all of this, after when I give you that hope again, um, my words will also restore your relationship with uh, the other people. And so... Not just with other people, but also with God. He said, they will know that, oh, they will be called my people and I will be their God. And so, in a sense, when um, when this all does happen, uh, restoration will also occur. And so it will be both people and God. Uh, 24 to 28. It says, my servant David will be king over them and they will have one shepherd. And they will walk in my ordinances and keep my statues and observe them. They will live in the land that I give, or that I gave to Jacob, my servant, which your fathers lived, and they will live on it, and their sons, and their sons forever, and my, and David, my servant, will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant with, of peace with them, and it will be everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them. And will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My dwelling place also will be with them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel. When my sanctuary is in their midst forever. Alright. So that one is pretty much God reiterating his covenant with his people. Back when he, um, the, all them Abraham days where he said, they will, you'll be my people and I will be your God and I will multiply you, I will bless you. And so that's pretty much what God reiterates by when uh, everything is restored. Um, he will, um, of course, this is, will be all through Jesus. Yeah, that uh, David, my servant, of course, the, the, des the descendant of David is Jesus because, of course, David is dead already. And so who else better to pass a line than through Jesus? And so Jesus was that servant. And of course, we know what Jesus did for us. He died for us to save us from our sins, to redeem us or to give us a new hope and to restore us from what sin has done to us. And so that's pretty much what that, um, that passage means. And so closing thought, it's, uh, the Bible has words or has God's words in them, which we know through this passage can heal can restore us, and of course, etc., etc. Knowing this, how can we use the Bible to heal, restore, etc., our lives or other people's lives? 
And so what is stopping us from reading these, like the Bible pretty much, the Bible contains God's words, which of course can heal us, that has power in it. Knowing that, why aren't we in the Bible more? Me personally as well. But I will pray for us that um, we will read, continually read the Bible more because, of course, it has power that can heal us. No matter what we're going through, it always has something in there that could uh, give us hope or heal and restore our relationship with other people or, and even God and help us to um, uh, understand what Jesus did for us and so that we may um, have hope for the future and his uh, covenant. So uh, that's it for my lesson. Let's all go to God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us this lesson. I pray that um, we continually be in your word, Lord Heavenly Father, just as we were uh, today, Lord. I pray um, that these words may, of course, heal and may, of course, restore our relationship with both others and you and also just to do other stuff too, Lord Heavenly Father, because your power knows no bounds, Lord. And so I thank you so much. And, of course, the coronavirus is still out there, Lord. I pray that you please be with us as we uh, continue our lives in quarantine or oh, just those that are brave enough to tackle this uh, disease, Lord Heavenly Father. I pray you be with us all. Keep us safe. Protect us until this virus is over, Lord Heavenly Father. We trust you and just with our physical and also with our spiritual. So I thank you so much. I lift up everyone here up to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Alrighty, I will enjoy the sunshine and I will see you guys in another week. God bless.